Good morning, y'all. I am the Texas Mother Trucker, and I am coming to you from Salt Lake City, Utah. I am with 50 Plus. He's not in the truck right now. Um, so I'm going to jump on real quick, and I said I'll make this video. So I'm going to talk to y'all today about the first week in the truck with the mentor. So as most of you already may know, 50 Plus from YouTube is my mentor. And if you want to know more about that, you can run over to his page, 50 Plus Trucker's Journey, and you can see the video that we made. Yes, I am tired in the video. As many people have pointed out, I had, it was the first day behind the wheel and I drove the entire 10 hours, 501 miles. Yeah, I was tired. <laughs> um, nobody will ever tell you that truck driving is easy. In the physical sense, it's easy to maneuver the truck if you know what you're doing, and that's the point of being with the mentor, you need to learn how to drive in different weather and up and down different terrain, like mountains. We will talk about those in a minute. <laughs> um, but for the most part, everything has been fine. I can't even say for the most part. I haven't really had any issues. So being on the truck as a female with a male, this is a question that gets asked a lot. I can't say that I can talk about other males and other females because most of you will already know you get on YouTube and you hear some horror stories. I can say that I definitely did my research before picking a company and that was one of the things that I looked for. What was the male to female ratio as far as mentorship and were there any reports of anything going on? Swift has none and I'm not saying that just because I work here. I'm saying that because I did the homework. There's no reports of any of that. There are a lot of females in, with male mentors that are out here now, and there's no problems. So as long as you both respect your space and your boundaries, there's no problems. I have absolutely no problems on this truck whatsoever. He's very respectful. Yeah, it's close quarters. Are you going to bump into each other every now and then? Yeah. I mean, we're not living in the Taj Mahal here. This thing, it, it's a vehicle. So my suggestion and advice would be to any female who's coming into the trucking industry, don't let having to be with a male mentor discourage you. And I'm not saying that you're going to be put with one, but I will say there is a huge shortage on mentors in the trucking community, no matter what company you go with. And there's even a more shortage, a more of a shortage with female mentors because there's not many women in trucking. I mean, yeah, there's a lot more now than there ever has been, but this is a male dominant industry. So I'm not a person who plays with statistics, but common sense tells me more often than not, you're going to be placed with a male. So don't let that discourage you. And I'm not saying that you need to come out here and know how to handle yourself. And you know, you need to come out here and know how to put a bitch down if they, if they get in your way, but it doesn't hurt to know that you're coming into a male oriented industry that's dominated by corporate people that are happen to be males as well. Common sense just kind of tells you you need to be a certain kind of person to come out here, but that shouldn't discourage, you know, dainty females from coming out here as well. I see plenty of them. They are thriving. They're kicking ass. I saw one the other day. She was like, whatever four times platinum is, that's what she was. It said platinum. It had four times on there. That girl had her truck decked out. She was a little bitty old cute thing. And I was just like, look at this little woman getting her money. So she's been doing this for a while. Uh, a very, very, very long while. Probably the only job she's ever had. She didn't look that old, but to be four times platinum, that's insane. That's like four million miles. So there you go. Don't come out here looking for trouble, females. And I'm gonna talk to the females right now because I am one. Granted, my hair will always be done. My nails will always be done. I don't wear a whole lot of makeup, even though I used to be a professional makeup artist. 
I'm usually looking like this. Um, I am more of a tomboy. I'm covered in tattoos. I am married. I'm not gay. Um, been married almost 19 years. Got three kids. But I've always known how to carry myself. I'm not looking for trouble. I don't take everything that men say to face value. Perfect example. The other night we were in Phoenix. We were at the Phoenix terminal. Little bitty cute old man. I mean, he had to have been 70s, maybe early 80s. He was really old. And he we were doing laundry. He was telling me his life story, military, he lost his wife to cancer, all this stuff and he wanted to come back out into trucks. So he was with a mentor, this and that. Long story short, we happened to finish our laundry at the same time. We're walking back to our respective trucks. And out of nowhere, he was like, hey, you know, I'm parked over here. You want to come check out my truck? Okay. Did he say it in a weird, creepy voice? No, he had a strange voice to begin with. <laughs> um, you know, was he offering me things or asking me to do things to go to his truck? No. Did I stop and take a second to be like, well, that's strange because I don't fucking know you. Um, yeah, I did, but I didn't make a deal about it. I came back and I told 50, yeah, I was talking to this little old dude and then all of a sudden he asked me to go back to his truck. And of course we both start laughing. Now, there are a lot of females that I know personally, if they were in the same situation, they would go cry rape. They would say that this man tried to put him in their truck and that's just not the fucking case. So there's a lot of mentors that are males that really don't want to even fuck with females because of the bullshit that goes along with the cattiness, the drama, the excessive outrageous bursts that a lot of females have. I have already gone through menopause because I had ovarian cancer and I don't have any of those organs. So yes, I am totally on the outside of the normal female spectrum. I don't have mood swings. I'm very, very calm and chill. All of those female hormones that make you go crazy, I don't have them anymore. So yeah, I'm a different kind of female now that you know I'm pretty much like 70 on the inside. So I don't fit that normal uh, female criteria that men are so afraid of. So women, don't be afraid to come out here and don't take what I'm saying be like, oh my God, this girl here and oh, I can't even believe she said that. Look, I'm just going to tell you what it is. I'm going to tell you the facts. I'm out here. I'm talking to these people. I don't sit in the truck all the time. If we're at a terminal, I get out. I like to go mingle. I'm not trying to have conversations that are going to last a lifetime with the people. But when you're in the truck all the time, you kind of just want to get out and see something different. Uh, we're in the beautiful mountains. So, you know, I like, I like to get out of the fucking truck. I like to go talk to people. I ask these questions. Men are terrified of having females on the truck because females lie. That is the bottom line. So when you come out here, understand that you're coming into a male dominated, a dominated industry. They're not going to cater to you. Although Swift does everything that they possibly can to make females 100% comfortable, especially when you're coming to the terminals, um, they have everything separated. So if you want to be that girl that doesn't want to, you know, co-mingle, um, or, you know, be a part of the co-ed trucking uh, community, they do offer females their own private space at most of the terminals. So if you're that girl that needs that extra little space, that's fine. I'm not saying that you have to come out here and forget who you are. Just leave about six of your eight personalities at the house. Don't bring all your bitches to the truck. There's not enough room for all of them. Okay? And you women know what I'm talking about. Y'all know that most females have quite a few personalities. Leave about 80-90% of them at the house. You can go get them whenever you go on your truck. Then y'all can just have a fucking slumber party. But when you come out here to fucking get, start your career, 
don't bring your drama. If you got problems with your husband or your boyfriend or your ex, I've seen it. Don't bring that shit to the truck. When you come out here, you cannot be thinking about bills at home. I'm going to tell this is stuff that I've gone through. My husband, I I have always been the one that deals with the bills and all that stuff. He doesn't even know who the electric provider is. And that's fine because he works his ass off. He provides. I've always been the woman who stayed at home for the most part and, you know, took care of all the house. So when I get out here, I, I said, you know, hey, we just parked. I'm tired. I need a shower. I need to go to bed. This, 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 and this needs to be paid. He doesn't have the login information. He doesn't know how, how much to pay. He doesn't know who to contact. I don't have time to deal with that shit. Should I have prepared him before I left? Yes, but I didn't think that I was gonna go straight from school to the mentor's truck. That's just the way it happened. So definitely set the people up at home if you got families and you got stuff that needs to be tended to. You're not always gonna have time to be on the phone, paying your bills, checking your emails. There's no time for that. And when you do have downtime, you're so fucking exhausted because your body has to get adjusted to sitting down long periods of time your body has to get adjusted to focusing as hard as you need to focus to move this truck right now or when we came here the load that i was hauling was forty-two thousand pounds i had been hauling four thousand pounds huge fucking difference and at some point i'm going to be hauling eighty thousand pounds so i'm not going to say that you're pulling it in your back or your shoulders any more than you know you would when you're pulling an empty trailer but you do have to control the vehicle a little more because when the trailer is empty the trailer is going to go like this okay especially if you're in the mountains and it's windy the trailer is going to move all over the place it's not so bad when the trailer is heavy but when you're coming down mountains um it's pushing you and if you move the truck one, you move the steering wheel too far to the one way and too far the other, it's windy, you're going down really fast, there's nothing really stopping that trailer from just going all over the place. So there's a lot of focus. This is not a job or a vehicle that you can just sit behind the wheel, kick your feet up out the window, even though I've seen some idiots doing it, and just cruise down the road, eating your Snickers bar, drinking your, you know, smoking, whatever you wanna do. Your fucking hands need to be on the wheel. And your eyes need to be going like this. You need to be paying attention to what is going on around you. So understand that. So physically, is it hard? No. Any female can get back there and, oh, thank God. Any female can move the tandems. Any female can pull the fifth wheel. Any female can put diesel. Any female can, what else do we do? Um, uncouple, couple. Any female can do any of this. I've been doing it. It's fine. But mentally and, you know, not actual physicality, but your body on the inside, you get tired, you get exhausted, you get fatigued. That's the word I'm looking for. So when you do have downtime, you don't have time to be dealing about dealing with jealous boyfriends, jealous girlfriends, um, bills shit going on at home your kid is sick my kids have been sick since i left for school one of them got sick then the other one got sick i live in kingwood texas if any of y'all watch the news kingwood texas was completely underwater my neighborhood looked like hurricane ike and harvey hit at the same time and my neighborhood doesn't flood my my whole community it never floods and i'm here and i was in corsicana watching my whole community go underwater and a lot of people ask, do you need to go home? What would going home do? I would be underwater with the rest of the people. So I had to keep it moving. And to some females and especially mothers, that's going to sound like a bitch move. But it's not. When you're two and a half hours away from devastation that's going on at home and what you're doing. I'm not, I wasn't out there partying. I wasn't out there, you know, hanging out with my friends. I was there doing what I needed to do for my career. There are tons and tons of men and women that work away from home, military prime example. Do you think that if I was stationed in Iraq, working for the government, that I'd be able to say, oh, you know what? My neighborhood's going underwater. I need to go home. I need to 
get on the next flight out of here. No, trucking is no different. Just because we're stateside doesn't mean that we can just be like, oh, by the way. Now, can you do those things when you're on your truck and you're doing your own thing? Yeah, you can. But when you're training, when you decide to come to school and get on the mentor's truck, there's none of that, okay? So you can do it and you can postpone your time. So don't get it twisted. Can you do it? Sure. Could I have done it in school? Yeah, I could have gone home. They're not holding you hostage. But if you leave when you're in school and you miss, you have to miss more than one hour, you can come back and you're going to start all over. To me, it wasn't worth it, especially when I took my emotions out of it. Yes, I was scared for my family. My kids were locked in their schools until 11 o'clock because the buses couldn't even get to them. It was a bad situation. Thank God for cellular service. I was able to get a hold of my kids. I was able to communicate with my husband. Was it a long and treacherous night for them? Yes, my house was not flooded, thank God. Um, but the pictures coming out, I mean, just painted this horrible story. And what was going on really was bad. We were just blessed that our house is very elevated. Um, some other people, such as my neighbors, weren't as fortunate. But going home in my Hyundai Sonata, what would I have done? So you have to think about things that way. When you come out here, ladies and men, leave your shit at home. When you come here, the people at home are going to keep moving on with their lives and shit is going to happen. But as far as the mentor program goes, you don't have time for that. Okay? So just know that coming out here. And if your mentor gets on to you because, you know, you got to keep stopping or you need to use your phone, you heard something through the grapevine, which I don't even know where the grapevine is out here on the road. But, you know, if you're that person that just wants to keep checking in on what's going on at home, you're not going to be able to focus behind this wheel. And that is one thing that 50 let me know from the beginning. He lets all of his subscribers know, hey, if you want to come out here and you want to get on the truck with me or any other mentor and you want to be a part of his community, leave your phone off and in the bunk. And that's what we do. And I've gotten to the point where I walk up and down the terminals and half the time I don't even have my phone anymore. I've gotten used to not having it. My family, now that I'm five weeks in, my family knows if it's really important send the message it'll come to my watch and i'll glance down at it and if it's important i'll tend to it as soon as i can whether we stop at a gas station for a break or lunch whatever so being on the mentor's truck the mentor is going to have rules and the rules are there for your safety and for the purpose of being on the mentor's truck you're supposed to be learning so while 50 and I have a great time, we laugh, we make videos, and it's fun, the rules have to be followed. So when the wheels are in motion, we're not here, you know, making videos or anything like that. Uh, 50 turns into mentor 50, I turn into student Teresa, and the learning continues. Do we have fun while we're learning? Yes. It's not boring. Um, 50 makes everything really funny and really easy to understand. So I am blessed that he is my mentor. And I have nothing bad to say about being on the truck with a mentor who happens to be a male. He's very respectful. Um, you know, he has his space. I have my space. And we make it work. So, and it's not like we're pushing to make it work. It just works. So, first week with the mentor, A+. Plus. And in the beginning, I will say that there was a little bit of growing pain on my part. He won't even know this unless he watches this video. Um, so, when you're in school, they're going to tell you, you know, this is the ideal schedule that you should follow. And I'm not going to repeat what they said because it doesn't matter. And I learned that really quick just within my first day of being on the truck. First day on the truck, I drove 10 hours. Is that what you're going to be asked to do? Probably not. But I have already been a cross-country driver in my car, 
And I think it was just kind of a way for him to test me to see what kind of stamina I had, if I could control the vehicle, and if I could for long periods of time. He purposely doesn't turn the radio on, which was driving me insane. Because when you're behind the wheel, in a vehicle that could kill every, anything that comes in its way, there's a little bit of stress there. And in a truck with complete silence for hours just staring at the road or the taillights in front of you, your brain is not being stimulated and it goes to sleep. And there were periods where I was just thinking to myself, why do we not have any kind of entertainment going on? Where's the music? What? Let's talk. Let's do anything to keep my mind stimulated. And he does it on purpose. And that's fine. While I was sitting here thinking, oh my God, I'm going to fall asleep. My eyes are awake. I'm, a, I'm paying attention to what's going on. But I could just feel my brain kind of like, hello, is anybody home? So I was able to pull through. I was able to maintain my focus. And that was part of the journey that he wanted to know what he was working with. And that's totally fine. So if you come out here and you can only drive a few hours at a time, you know, your mentor is going to work with you. That's the point. They don't expect you to come out here and knock out 10 hours in a day. Again, I'm not the average person that's going to come into trucking. So that was his way of making sure, you know, he knew where I was and it's worked out great. So that would be the only thing. I was really concerned with the fact that I was behind the wheel for so long. Um, I had full control of the vehicle the whole time. I was not falling asleep. Uh, you do get a little shoulder pain. And it's, you know, stuff that your body will get acclimated to. Um, other than that, I don't have anything else to say. Um, so, definitely... If this is something that you want to do and you're serious about, don't let stupid shit or definitely don't let other people's stupid shit get in the way of you doing what you really want to do. People are going to say good and bad things about everything. I'm sure if you go ask the guy who won the lotto, you know, and he's supposed to be living his best life ever, he's still going to be bitching about something. People like to say a lot of shit about Swift. A lot. Swift did not give me this shirt. I paid for this shirt. And then I bought the bag. There's a bag that you can buy. I'll do a video on it later. Um, that has all of this Swift stuff in there. And people are like, oh, you know, they just want you to buy their shit. No, I sought it out. I saw 50 do a video on it and I wanted it. Um, it's really good to have. And it has a lot of stuff that you're going to need when you get on your own truck. So why the fuck not? And the stuff inside the bag is worth more than they're charging for the bag. So I'll do a whole video on the back at a later date when I have more space and I got my own situation going on. But I think it's important to show up to your shippers and receivers, you know, looking decent. I wear a lot of like rock and roll shirts, Marilyn Manson, Linkin Park, stuff like that. Is it cool? To, it's not professional in my opinion. There's plenty of truckers out here that are not wearing Swift stuff and I'm looking at them because I'm at the terminal. For me personally, I think that it just looks better. So, Monday, hold on. Cloudy with rain. They're letting us know it's going to rain. Um, so, I think that that works for me. Whatever works for you is going to work for you. But the commonality is, if this is what you want to do, tune everyone else out. Tune everyone else out. People are going to talk shit about Swift. Swift is the largest fucking trucking company in the States. So, people are going to talk shit about them. They're easy targets. But I can tell you, as a female, sitting in a truck yard full of dudes, some who are staring at me because I'm talking to myself on the phone, there's nothing to be afraid of coming out here, I promise. And in the event that somebody was to mess with you, say at a truck stop, I'll do another video on truck stops. If somebody messes with you, you're going to hear a lot of fucking truck doors open. Everybody in the trucking community takes care of everyone else. Whether you like the person, you don't like the person, hell, half the time you don't even fucking know them. It is a community all in itself and they take care of each other. Male and female. So, I don't think there should be a huge 
difference when you're talking about males in the industry and females in the industry because I don't see a, a variation in sex. I think that humans can do whatever they want. Whether you're male or female, that doesn't really register with me. Um, that's just me. I don't think that females need special treatment. I don't think that females need their own section of special showers and lockers and bathrooms. I just don't find it necessary and that's just me. But if you are that female that needs that extra special stuff, there's nothing wrong with that. And they have it for you. So, I hope that that answers a lot of the questions. I think I answered even more than the questions that were asked. <clears throat> First week has been phenomenal. I have 39, or no, 32 hours under my belt. On Wednesday, we'll start team driving, which will be amazing. So I'll drive for 10 hours while he's sleeping. And when he wakes up, I go to sleep. And we just keep the truck rolling nonstop. So I'll knock my hours out even faster. Uh, is everybody going to finish their hours in three weeks? No, and that's okay. You're not supposed to. It's what you can handle. So don't come out here thinking, oh my God, I have to live up to these standards. I have to do this. I have to do that. I have to do this. Your mentor is going to work with you. Your mentor is not a drill sergeant. He's not here to make sure that you're driving 500 miles a day. That's just how we roll. I knew that coming in here. And if I wouldn't have been able to do it, he would have been okay with that too. And it works. So, ladies, if this is what you want to do, do it. Don't be scared of anything. The truck is only going to do what you tell it to do. So understand that. The truck is not going to jump ramps or fall down mountains. It's not going to do any of that. And trust me, I thought I was going to kill us. And I was completely in control of the truck. I was just letting <laughs> the long way down on the side of the mountain get to my head. Again, I will talk about mountains. It deserves its own video. And just the different um, terrains that you're going to drive on, you know, we'll do a video on that because the mountains that I've gone down already are nothing in comparison to what I'm going to drive on leaving Utah. So I will wait until uh, probably Wednesday after I've already driven from Salt Lake to Denver. That is the steepest range of mountains that I'm ever going to drive down. So I will make the mountain video on Wednesday when I survive. So, um, yeah, it's been great. I'm having a good time. There was a one point where I thought, you know what? This is not for me. I need to go home. And it was the mountains. <laughs> and once I got through it, I was like, what a bitch. Like, what were you doing? So there is that little bitty, tiny five-year-old girl that still lives inside of me somewhere that was like, abort, abort, abort. Uh, but we made it through. And I was driving in the mountains at nighttime. Well, I was still scared every time it was time to go down. But... I had the knowledge. I had the mentor. Like, he was cool as a fucking cucumber. I'm like, I'm scared. We're going to die. And he was like, why are you scared? Like, he was so fucking calm. And I was like, all right. He has a family to go home to. And if he's not freaking out, then maybe I should not be freaking out. So it's just the fear of the unknown. And I think that's why a lot of females uh, look for other females that are out here in the industry to answer these questions. And that is completely cool. That's what I'm out here for. That's why I started documenting my journey. So any other questions that you have, I'm always going to answer them. Remember, I am on the road. So if I don't get back to you immediately, I'm not ignoring you. I'm not that person. So any comments, leave them down below. I will get them. Uh, I'm off today. So if you want to ask questions today, I'll be on my phone all day long. I got to catch up on housewives. I am that female. I love reality TV. Bravo and E are my favorite channels. And of course, Game of Thrones tonight. Finale, finale, series finale. It's heartbreaking, but fucking exciting. So that is all for today. Sorry about the long video. There was a lot of information to cover. And I promise I'll go back to having 15 minute videos. Um, so that is all for today. I am going to sign off now and I'll be waiting for your questions. Bye.